Welcome back to the Lumios Post where we talk about all things Pokemon and today we're going to be talking about the potential plot and kind of a folklore behind uh, the Teal Mask which is of course the first part of the DLC pack that we're getting for Scarlet and Violet called the Hidden Treasures of Area Zero. This is going to be kind of covering the lore behind the Pokemon that are appearing in this DLC as well as potentially give us the uh, idea of what the plot could be looking like for this DLC pack. So without further ado, let's just get right in. So uh, these Pokemon are seemingly based off of the tale of Mamotaro, which is a, a Japanese folklore, like legend, tale, story. Uh, I, I guess from the best that I can kind of gather, it's like very similar to what uh, Johnny Appleseed would be in America, where like it's like, you know, it's kind of just folklore and explanation for something, but it's not really real. But there are some people who's like kind of believe in it, you know. It's very similar to that, except instead of planting apple trees, this guy fought demons, which is, you know, objectively cooler. Uh, but yeah, so the reason we know this is because the three kind of Pokemon that you're going to be meeting in this, uh, other than the Teal Mask Pokemon itself, Ogre Pond, are Okie Dogie, Monkey Dory, and Pheasantipity, which are supposed to be reminiscent to the creatures that, or the animals rather, that Mamotaro encountered on his adventures. Uh, he actually meets a talking dog, uh, a Shiba Inu to be specific, which is what Okie Dogie is, a pheasant, and a monkey. Of course, that, you know, I mean, do I even need to explain that that's clearly what these three are? I mean, it yeah but uh, so what it is is Mamotaro was born from a peach and he goes to this island filled with demons and this is a very condensed version of the story by the way and he fights the demons and captures their chief and it's all like kind of part of him trying to get the plundered treasure that these demons have uh taken uh, basically like pirated from people so you can kind of see, I mean, treasure should be like something that makes you go, oh, treasure, you know, because that's a, a very big theme in Scarlet and Violet. You know, the whole journey is called the treasure hunt. And, you know, it's all like people keep talking about, oh, find your treasure. This is my greatest treasure, all this. So definitely reminiscent uh, of, of that theme here. And what this probably is, is if you look at at this festival it's clear that it's celebrating kind of some story that involves ogre pond and these three pokemon uh, because you can see that there's masks for all the pokemon involved there is a sign in the forest that shows like a trainer running with the three pokemon chasing this beast which i imagine is definitely ogre pond but like with you know the mask off and probably like its true beastly form I, I kind of compared it to in a recent video i did uh Silvalli and how type null is like just Silvalli with a helmet on that's constricting its power and when it evolves it even like just breaks off that helmet and is a Silvalli, right very similar thing with ogre pond but probably instead of an evolution this is just simply a form change so what this probably is is this area we're going to kitakami is uh, going to have an old folklore very similar to Mamotaro. They're probably going to talk about a hero or a trainer who once uh, fought this beast who had stolen this treasure and reclaimed the treasure and gave it to the people of Kitakami by uh, fighting him alongside these three Pokemon, Pheasantipity, Okidogi, and Monkey Dory. Now, the question is what was this treasure you know it, it's not just going to be gold or something it's going to be something you know much deeper than that it's going to be something very important to the Paldea region uh or to the Kitakami region rather and uh that that's one thing that I think I may have figured out so in order to answer the question of what this treasure is we have to look at what we know the Kitakami region does not exist in Paldea it is not it is a separate region this is a brand new region it says several times in like the press information they even said it in the presents where they announced this DLC that this is outside of the borders of Paldea so very very likely in fact I'd say almost definitely this is going to be a uh 
an explainer for how terrestrial exists here. You know, terrestrial is supposed to be a phenomenon only in the Paldea region, but given that it's the main gimmick of this region, it's very likely going to be uh, tied into, or of this generation, I should say, it's very likely going to be tied into this DLC as well. In fact, I mean, the second DLC, which again takes place outside of uh, the Paldea region, features the Pokemon Terrapagos, which we know from uh, the base game of Scarlet and Violet is responsible for the terrestrial phenomenon. So I think that Ogre Pond is going to be an explainer for how this region has terrestrial without having to, you know, be a part of Paldea. I think probably what happened is Ogre Pond somehow stole the plundered treasure was Terra Crystals or Terra Shards, something that allowed, uh, powerful enough to allow this region to access a phenomenon that's supposed to only occur in Paldea. Uh, maybe even it involves Herba Mystica somehow. Perhaps Ogre Pond stole Herba Mystica and, you know, he took it away. So then you have this hero trainer team up with these three Pokemon to fight Ogre Pond, capture it, you know, contain it with the mask and take the Herba Mystica and the Terra Shards, or maybe it's even both, you know. We know that Herba Mystica only exists in the Paldea region, as far as we know, and Terra Stool only exists in the Paldea region, as far as we know. So it stands to reason that these two could somehow be connected, in which case, you know, it makes sense that it could have been the Herba Mystica. So then he captures the Ogre Pond, you know, contains it in the mask, takes the treasure, the Herba Mystica, gives it to the townsfolk, and that's why it's such a big celebration, because now the townsfolk has access to Herba Mystica, which, you know, as we saw in the story of Scarlet and Violet, has crazy uh, abilities. It was able to bring back Arvin's Mabasta from, like, the brink of death, and it was able to, you know, get your Coridon or Miridon, depending on your version, uh, access to new powers uh, that it, like, previously kind of lost. So, these people are celebrating the Herba Mystica being returned to them, or given to them, rather, by this hero trainer in the past. And, and maybe even Terrestrial, too, you know? It's a, it's a very beautiful phenomenon, and it's very important to the culture of Paldea. So, it could be very important to the culture of Kitakami as well. You see on the promo art for uh, this DLC pack, that or this DLC part, rather, that there are lanterns with the different types on them. And, of course, types are a big part of Terrastal, so this could very much be, like, what this festival is celebrating. It's Terrastal and them getting the Terrastal phenomenon. You know, that's a very beautiful thing. Uh, like I said, I could see it being a huge part of their culture. So that's what they're kind of celebrating this hero doing, giving them the Herba Mystica to heal, uh, you know, almost anything, and the uh, Terrastal phenomenon. Now, more proof of this would also be if you look at Ogre Pond, he has little, uh, like, crystal-like features all around his head. Like, all around the actual mask part of his face. And I think what this is, is these are Terra Shards. And that's, it's kind of like uh, when you see in movies and stuff, when a villain has stolen treasure, like, the very next scene will kind of be him sitting back in his chair and he's, like, got gold rings on his finger and he's got like gold necklace you know he just kind of decorates himself in the treasure it would be very similar to that with like that's that's what ogre pond has done to itself as it's decorated itself with terrestrial and this here has gotten it back so what is the plot of uh this dlc of the teal mask dlc what what could potentially be happening here well i imagine that during the festival you know, perhaps they have a showing off of like, you know, oh, look, these Pokemon can terrestrialize and all this. We we thank the hero for giving us this great phenomenon. And then it doesn't terrestrialize. Why is that? And basically you find out that Ogre Pond has once again stolen something that allows for terrestrialization in this region. So you have to once again go out and find these ancient hero Pokemon or these legendary hero Pokemon and unite them to once again defeat Ogre Pond. And perhaps they could even, you know, tie this into, like, new titans, you know? You have to find different Herba Mysticas to kind of 
you know, all the pieces of Urban Mystica will allow for Terrastal or will lead to something with Terrastal. So you have to fight different Titans in order to get that. That could be very, very possible in my opinion. And it would be really cool to do this where it's like you're at a disadvantage. You can't use Terrastal here because Ogre Pond's stolen it. And perhaps even the battle against Ogre Pond could have Ogre Pond Terrastalize. You know, there's a lot of talk about potential like Terraforms or like Terramax form as my friend Professor Cowrie has kind of coined it. So maybe even Ogre Pond will have a Terramax form and you can't, you know, Terra your own Pokemon because he's stolen the ability to Terra and you have to fight him without it. And then by doing that, of course, you allow Terrastool to, you know, be used in Kitakami again. I do think that that's a very a big way they could make the kind of legend of Mamotaro work in the Pokemon uh, world, you know, that that would be the treasure could be Terrastool and these Urba Mystica, and I think that's also a great way to set up the plot for your journey, as well as make this all tie into Paldea, because you have to remember, this DLC, like, package, this expansion, is called the Hidden Treasures of Area Zero, but you're journeying not just outside of Area Zero, you're journeying outside of Paldea. So for it to be called the Hidden Treasures of Area Zero, we're obviously still going to be doing very Paldean tied things. This is going to still be very important to the Paldea region, even though it takes out place outside of the Paldea region. It's going to be more so important to the Paldea region than Isle of Armor or Crown Tundra was to the Gala region. This is going to be essentially a sequel to Scarlet and Violet, in my opinion, whereas Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra were pretty much self-contained stories that didn't really touch the plot of uh, the overall Gala region. That, that won't be the case here, and I think this is a great way to go about it for part one. Be sure to let me know what you think of this idea for this folklore behind these Pokemon, as well as the potential plot for this DLC pack. Uh, be sure to also let me know your thoughts on what the DLC could have, some cool things that you think might be coming, and also be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell because it greatly helps the channel, and it also lets me know, oh, they really like this, uh, maybe I should do another video like this on the second DLC pack, the Indigo Disc. So yeah, uh, again, like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And until next time, I'll see all of you later.